Hi, this is Frank for Walking for Health and Fitness with show number 11 of my weekly walking tips and inspiration series. This is my goal is to do 52 shows, 11 down, 41 to go. Topics in today's shows is, this is the uh, lower leg pain treatment show. Okay, well, when we're walking, um, you know, the egg, the legs get aches and pains, stuff like that. And so I'm going to cover in the tips this week how to take care of that, treat your legs right, and it'll treat you right. So we have an inspirational quote. Our first one is by George Macaulay Trevelyan. He was a British historian and academic. Interesting what he said. We have Eating Right, Recipes by Stacy, and today's recipe, Chipotle Pork Tacos with Pineapple Salsa. Mm, sounds good. Today's background image was taken on one of my walks, and it's one of my go-to routes, but it also has a lot of sentimental meaning. You'll find out about that. We have walking tip number two, again, on your legs, rejuvenating tired leg muscles, and uh, something I learned in coaching cross-country, so check that out. Our walking news, six benefits of exercising in cold weather. Now, this is great news and information if you are looking to lose weight. Inspirational quote number two, it's an appropriate uh, Japanese proverb for the winter months. And then we finish up with the review in your last step. Here's the show. And our first quote, I have two doctors, my left leg and my right. That's by GM Trevelyan and George Macaulay Trevelyan, Trevelyan was a British historian and academic. Now, do you display any inspirational quotes around your office or your home? If you do and you'd like to share them with the audience, send me a picture, send me a little description. If you want, I'll put it on the show or I could put it on my website, whatever you'd like to do. Okay, you can email me at frank at walkingforhealthandfitness.com. In the show notes, that's included with every show I do, are the images, the inspirational quotes. You can print out and display them wherever you want. They look nice, so check that out. And now, now walking tip number one, how to treat tired and sore legs. Fitness, it's what keeps us strong, healthy, and sane. But how often has your walk felt so good that you didn't want to stop? So you wanted to get up to the hill to see that great view. Uh, you wanted to do your best time for the mile when you tracked it on your app. Or you just wanted to get another mile in because it was so nice outside. Great. That's what I'm here to help you do. But then you realize that you push yourself a little too far and it might cost you. It might cost you with sudden pain, which is kind of rare when we're walking, but it happens. It might cost you uh, when you sleep and your legs feel tired and achy. Or it could be that you have a slow buildup of soreness over time that you just can't shake, usually due to overuse. So you may be suffering, like I said, from an overuse injury. You overdid it. Now your lower legs are sore and you're paying the price. If you're in pain, do this right away. Stop all activity until you figure out what's going on with your legs. Whenever we overdo it on exercise or we fail to fully recover, some of our body parts rebel at first until we get stronger. So in this case, our legs feel sore and achy. Let's stop what we're doing and take an evaluation of what's going on. To make sluggish legs feel good, elevate them. When you elevate your legs at or above heart level, it helps keep the blood from pooling in your lower legs and improves blood flow to the rest of your body. Soak your legs in cool or ideally cold water. Cold helps reduce inflammation. Soak your legs in a warm bath. We do the opposite there. And uh, that feels good. The heat feels good on your tired, aching muscles and it increases blood flow. Rollers or foam rollers you can use. Now, foam rolling is a self-myofascial release technique. It can help to relieve muscle tightness, soreness, and inflammation, and increase your joint range of motion. So check out the foam rollers on Amazon. See what uh, you know, they help. If you, if you do that consistently, and it's, it's an easy thing to do, um, they'll help tight, uh, relieve the tightness in your legs. And then there's over-the-counter medication you could take. Taking a dose of a non-steroidal anti-inflammatory drug, like an ibuprofen, and they come in the brand names of Advil and Motrin, they help a lot with the aches. A little bit of rest, a little bit of treatment, you'll be in great shape. Now, to avoid sore muscles and strains, we also need to warm up properly. Before you start your walk, do not stretch, okay? Stretching cold, tight muscles is a recipe for disaster. So 
begin by doing a gentle warm-up. Uh, I want to emphasize gentle, slow, and steady. We call this active stretching. Basically, we'll use movement and not a static stretch where that holds the position. It's just going through a range of motions easily, such as doing squats, high knees, calf raises, ankle circles, leg swings, and uh, pelvic loops. Okay, These will help loosen your joint and muscles. Then you could go out for your walk when you finish the warm-up. Now, after your walk, you're going to do some light, gentle stretching, and I'm going to emphasize the words light and gentle. Hold each stretch for 20 to 30 seconds, gentle, no pain, no strain, okay? Over time, your muscles will loosen up. We could do calf stretches, we could do hamstring stretches, quads, lower back, hip flexor, okay? All of those stretches. Now, by being proactive with your warm-up, with your leg stretching, with your leg strengthening, and by treating your legs right, you'll be free from aches and pains for years to come. Now, my book, Fitness Walking and Bodyweight Exercises, includes a free bonus supplemental guide with images of the warm-up with the stretching and movements to keep you pain-free. The audiobook is also included in the purchase price, along with an exclusive uh, page set up for anyone who's purchased the book. There's more information on that page. So you're getting a great value. And if you uh, go on Amazon, the link will be below. It, it's, uh, the book is at a great price, so check that out. For more information on treating your legs, check out my blog post, How to Treat Lower Leg Pain at Home. The link will be in the description. So if you like what you see and what you hear on this channel and what I'm saying in my shows and in my other videos, click the like button, click the share button, subscribe to this channel. Um, the Walking for Health and Fitness channel has the show, but also has many uh, videos on different topics. There's my walking tips series, there is a mindset uh, series. There's a music series. So there's a lot going on. Check out my channel. And we're up to the eating right segment of the show. This is Recipes by Stacy. You can find her at Instagram. She's under the uh, handle pancakes underscore Stacy. See, so check it out. The link to Stacy will be in the description. Today's recipe, Chipotle pork tacos with pineapple salsa. So Stacy says... Two things I always have in my freezer, corn tortillas and ground pork. This meal came together nicely. So if you don't have pineapples, use mango or kiwi or even apples. And again, Stacy's recipe is in the show notes. Every show comes with a list of links of what the show was about. Check that out. The full recipe is in the show notes. Link is in the description. And today's background image, uh, the George Washington Bridge. I think it's one of the most famous bridges in the world. And luckily, I, I grew up not far from, from the bridge. And I took this picture from the parking lot of uh, Ross's Dock. It's at the Palisades Interstate Park. Um, there's a parking lot that is just, uh, the parking lot is north of the bridge. Bridge is from looking south there. You can see Manhattan behind it. The access road is cool. It goes actually underneath the bridge, and then it, it stops beyond that. If you head uh, north, there are hiking trails right along the river, which is a really great walk. So if you're ever in the area, check out the Palisades Interstate Park. Now, this is special because as a kid, uh, we live with my grandfather and he loved to drive, just take drives. And, you know, he was my babysitter. I'd go with him and we'd go down to Ross's dock a lot. He'd get out of the car, walk around a little bit. He had, was suffering from emph emphysema, from smoking and, and from, from his uh, work. And as a kid, I used to throw rocks into the, uh, into the river. So I put this up there. It's a great memory of my grandfather. He's a terrific man. So if you have an image uh, that you'd like to share in the background or share a story about what an image on a walk means to you, just send it to me at Frank for Walking for Health and Fitness. .com. So from you can see from the background image, I like to take pictures when I walk. Uh, my uh, newsletter, or call it my e-magazine, Walking Inspiration, it's a quarterly magazine. It comes out at the beginning of every season. If you sign up on my email list, you get a free copy delivered right to your inbox. That's, uh, link is in the description. It's Walking Inspiration. It's usually anywhere from 20 to 25 pages long. It's a quick read. A lot of walking tips that I don't put on my website or even on the YouTube video. So uh, I tried to give a little extra there. So Get on my email list to get walking inspiration every quarter. Thank you. And walking tip number two, 
rejuvenates tired leg muscles. So again, this is the leg show, right? Now, when your legs feel like, ugh, okay, I had to spell that out, ugh. Spell out the ABCs with your feet. And here's what I mean by that. And uh, I did a, a video on that. Point your toes in the air and move them as if you're tracing out the ABCs with your big toe. This activates the smallest muscles in your ankles and calves, which pump fluid out of your legs and back towards your heart. The same thing as elevating the legs, but it also works the muscles this way. It's more of an active movement and stretch. Scientists at New York's Binghamton University says this simple trick can ease leg heaviness and pain within two minutes. And doing it twice daily helps prevent leg swelling for 44% of the women who are in the study. Okay, so I'm a cross-country coach. Um, and during, at some point during the season, when we pick up the activities for the kids, they, they're running further, the intensity is more, they start to suffer from what's called shin splints. Basically their legs ache and shin splints is like a catch all phrase. So this year I had one of my runners who came, the first one who came up with, um, having the uh, leg pain. I said, try this out. He did it for two days when usually we would do ice and stretching and all of that. And, and he, this, the athlete would have to sit out for a while. He did the uh, stretches. Two days, he was back running again. So I now incorporated in the warm-up for my team. And this year, we've had no lower leg injury, no shin splint uh, stoppage of running. So these work out great. So if your legs feel sluggish, write out the ABCs with your big toe. And you can watch my video right here. Tired leg muscle relief. Make your legs feel great. It's a video I did uh, last summer. Um check that out. And for even more information on treating leg pain, go to my website. My blog post is called How to Treat Lower Leg Pain at Home. Link will be in the description. Check that out right on my website. And for more walking information, I've got you covered with my three books, Walking uh, for Health and Fitness, Fitness Walking and Body Weight Exercises, and Walking Inspiration. So I got you covered. Overall walking information, body strength and training information, and mindset information. There's three bonuses included with each book. The audiobook version, the supplemental guide, which has additional images and information, and also there's access to an exclusive web page for each book. So check that out on Amazon. It's a great deal. And we're up to walking news. We have six benefits of exercising in cold weather. Now, cold weather can actually supercharge exercise and help you. You can burn energy more efficiently. It causes bad fat cells to act like metabol metabolically beneficial brown cells, brown fat, enables longer, more efficient workouts. Chilly activities also help you stave off the winter blues. Very important this time of year. You get a dose of vitamin C by being outside. And lastly, you enjoy nature. Quote, if you combine cold and exercise, it has an addictive or even synergistic effect, end quote. That's by Shingo Kajimara. He's the author of the article that contains all of this information, and the link to the article is in the show notes. So download the show notes. Now, if you are healthy, do the warm-up or the active stretching I mentioned earlier in this uh, video, and gear up properly. Okay, watch my dressing in layers video. Now, you don't have to let the cold winter months lock you inside. Staying active in all seasons will spur positive side effects that last long after your walk. Now, to fully grasp how we deal with cold, you have to understand homeostasis. Now, this is the body's built-in self-regulation mechanism that maintains stable internal conditions for optimal survival. Humans' core body temperature is 98.6 degrees. To keep our internal machines running smoothly and achieve homeostasis, the body favors operating at this temperature. In turn, when we overheat, we sweat. When we're chilly, we shiver. Now, sweating doesn't dissipate energy. It's just a way for our bodies to cool off. However, shivering requires energy to produce heat. Now, in a cold environment, at rest, we burn more calories than we do at normal temperatures. And the science of fat burning. If you're interested in increasing energy expenditure or losing weight, it makes a lot of sense to exercise in the cold. And here's why. For about the first 10 to 30 minutes of cold exposure, muscles shiver to make heat. Eventually, your body starts to turn the bad white fat, which stores excess energy, into calorie-burning beige fat or activate existing good brown fat stores 
to make heat a process called non-shivering thermogenesis. Brown and beige fat activity is closely linked with metabolic health and can suppress inflammation. Now, it also appears to influence the post-exercise afterburn or how much the body burns at rest. Now, if you have more brown fat, you're more protected from the age-associated obesity or insulin resistance, type 2 diabetes, and cardiovascular disease. Cold is the most potent activator of brown fat that we know of. Essentially, activating these metabolic benefits doesn't require an hour in a cold freezer or 10 degree days, but it can occur with a regular cold exposure to around 40 degrees Fahrenheit. Cold weather can also improve endurance, enabling you to go longer and harder during your workout. That's because the body doesn't have to work as hard to regulate temperatures as it does in the hot climates. Now, when we do prolonged or cardiovascular exercise in the cold environment, we can better regulate our temperature and not overheat, improving our performance, particularly for cardio. Time outdoors is a known mood booster. It can counter the winter blues or seasonal affective disorder by enabling people to get their adequate daily dose of vitamin D from the sun and also to generate the endorphins that come from working out. Now, during these times of stress and the winter, it's easy for us to hunker down and hibernate. But this often means we move less, we eat more, and exacerb exacerbate, yeah, you said it, exacerbate unhealthy lifestyle choices. So combine this with the stress of dealing with life during the pandemic, then we have a recipe for poor physical and psycho-emotional health. So just heading outside during the winter months for a quick refresh and a reset and doing some deep breathing, just standing outside is better than doing nothing. But cold weather exercise, especially in the extreme polar temperatures, isn't risk-free. So you have to be careful of a few things. It can increase the risk of muscle injury if you're not warmed up properly. Breathing issues due to the dry, extra cold air. Hypothermia if you don't dress properly. And cardiovascular problems for people with a history of heart trouble. Now, in the cooler conditions, the body tries to prevent heat loss by shrinking blood vessels, which can heighten blood pressure and cause adverse cardiovascular events. To avoid the potential negative side effects, do these things. One, dress in layers. Watch my video on dressing in layers. Protect your hands, your face, and your feet. Blood flow moves away from the extremities to the core in response to the cold. So wearing gloves and socks and a hat is important. Wearing a buff or face covering can help avoid any airway problems from icy air. Warm up. Colder conditions means that you're at a greater risk of injury or muscle strain. So before a winter workout, do the workout that I mentioned above. Do some arm circles, ankle circles, high knees, lunges for the primary muscles uh, to warm up and avoid strain. This is the active stretching I talked about, like I said, in the first uh, walking tip. So stay hydrated also. Cold weather can also send the body's thirst signal out of whack. It's important to keep drinking lots of water even if you aren't thirsty. So get outside today. Take advantage of all the health and weight loss benefits of working out and walking in cold weather. Now, if you need some extra motivation to get outside, consider joining a walking group. Look in your local area for walking groups or look online. I have two groups. One is your first walking group. Okay, a lot of beginner information on there and just sharing ideas and encouragement is the big part of this. And also the same thing for the Walk 100, Walk 1000 Miles USA group that's just started out this year. Uh, we're trying to build that to encourage people to walk 1000 miles in a 12-month period. It's a great goal to shoot for. And as usual, the link is in the description and in the show notes for both of those groups. They're on Facebook. Check them out. And inspirational quote number two, one kind word can warm three winter months. And that's a Japanese proverb. So if you have a walking health fitness question you'd like me to answer, send me an email at frank at walkingforhealthandfitness.com or make a comment below this video and I'll either email you back or I'll include it in the show or I'll include it in the show an email to tell you that I put it in the show. Your next step, download and post the inspirational quotes from today's show. Send me a picture where you quote them, where you, where you display them and I'll put them uh, in the show. 
Walking tip number one, how to treat tired and sore legs. Treat your legs right. Recipes by Stacy. Check out the recipe. You'll like it. Today's background image, okay? I talked about what it meant to me with my grandfather. Do you have a place you walk that has sentimental reason, uh, values or reasons why you walk there? Send them, shoot me a note, you know? Tell me what it is. Uh, if you'd like, I'd post it or I'd just love to hear the story. Walking tip number two, rejuvenate tired leg muscles. Do the ABCs with your toe, leading the way. And in our walking news, there's the winter workout, six benefits of exercising in cold weather. Now, this is great news and information if you are looking to lose weight. So the link to that article is in the show notes. Download those. And lastly, inspirational quote number two, one kind word can warm three winter months. That's a Japanese proverb. So be kind to one another. So this is Frank for Walking for Health and Fitness. Thank you for watching my show. Walk on.